happening all around us, all pointing to the fact that this world will soon come to an end. 
Are you preparing yourself for the coming of the Lord? Are you getting ready? Pray that the Lord Himself will prepare you through this message this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we want to thank you because of your love. Thank you because of the ways you, which you've called us into. Lord, we come before you this morning that the grace we need to continue in these ways. Lord, give to every one of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into your word right now, I pray that we will draw strength and life through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, speak your word to every we are to God. Amen. And give us the grace that we will not just hear, but that we will be the doers of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because we have an answer. Worship and we exalt to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall I have seat, please? This morning in our Sunday message, we are considering the title Running the Christian Race. Running the Christian Race. We'll take our text from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We'll read from verse 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Knowing not that they which won in the race won all, but one received the prize. So won that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. I myself should be a cast away. I pray none of us will be a cast away in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, from our text where we were, Paul the Apostle both had some, you know, some experience some exercise, some practice of the war. And from there, it was trying to teach us some spiritual fruits. You know, many of us will be familiar today with the athletics, like of, uh, just last year, we had the London Olympics. And as a result of the Olympics, many of us were familiar with the Olympics. Can I tell us what we experienced last year is something that has been in existence since even in the days of the early church. The Olympics actually started from, you know, from Athens, from Athens, and Athens happens to be one of the one of the cities that Paul the Apostle preached the gospel there. And you see, this is something that has been common. It was common in Antioch, also common in Tarsus and other places. You know, as we read in Acts of the Apostles. Generally, when, you know, when people start preparing for these ways, for this competition, because at the Olympic, they always have an ultimate goal in mind. And what is that goal? What is that goal they have in mind? I'm asking them, what is that goal they have in mind? To win the gold medal. That's the ultimate. Silver will not do. Bones will not do. But there is that ultimate goal that I want to win the gold medal. And as a result of that, you find out that the Olympians, that those, the athletes that will participate in that competition. In fact, when I was reading of the London Olympics and some of the artists, uh, athletes that won gold medal, and I read some of their preparation in which they give to that competition. I was amazed. I was amazed. I said, 
if people of the world can be doing this, in fact, there was one of them that even had to defy, defy a marriage, defy it, and say, no, I will not get married now. When I get married, no marriage will be come here. I will not be able to practice for my Olympics. That she had to defy a marriage till after the Olympics. No wonder she won a gold medal. In fact, there was one again that had to even deny herself of some, some set of me for almost two years. For almost two years. In preparation for the London Olympics. And can I tell you that even after the London Olympics, many of them have started preparation for the next Olympic that is coming up in where? In Brazil in 2016. And we have about two, three years left now. But some of them have started the preparation since last year. You know, what do we learn from this? If these athletes they are doing all this, that's why Paul the Apostle he not brought that thing, he not brought that occurrence, he not brought that event into life to teach us some spiritual lessons there. He says, that's why he says in verse 20, for no you know that they which won in the race won all, won all, but only one person will receive the prize, that's the fruit. You cannot have two gold medals, no. In fact, there was one race that was so almost so close that it was even by point, point, point something, zero point something seconds that they used to determine. In fact, that was uh, that one was even last I uh, mean, uh, last either two or three weeks ago. There was even point zero zero seconds because the two athletes they were almost at the finishing line. They almost got to the finishing line. And the other one, the only thing that gave her the gold medal was because her head touches the finishing line before her body touches the finishing line. And that's why she won the gold medal. It was that's what they're supposed to see. Everybody won, but only one person received the prize. Received the prize. And you see, that's why it says, so wrong that ye may obtain. So wrong, brethren. We have the prize. If the athletes of the world, they are running to win just the gold medal. In fact, there was one of the athletes of, um, I think I read it in the papers, that our own gold medal she won in the Olympics. When Thief broke into her house, she was afraid that that gold medal, three of them were stolen. Olympic gold medals were stolen. She was afraid that maybe those gold medals were stolen. Because I think these are perishable things. These are treasures that, will be, that can be stolen. These are treasures that can get lost. These are treasures, you know, that when think that I've never read of an Olympian that died, and after his death, you know, they now say, okay, to honor him, we will also bury the gold medal that he won with him. I've never read that. The family will want to take that and maybe sell it later as an antiquity. You know, please, these are perishable things. These are perishable things. The gold that was won, in the 1960 Olympics has no value with the gold of today because these are perishable things. But we have an ultimate goal in mind. That is the goal to make heaven. The goal to make heaven. Heaven is our goal. That's why the Lord is calling us this morning to war in this Christian race. That's why Paul the Apostle said in verse 25, and everyone that strives for the mastery, for the crown, for the book, is temperate in all things. Is temperate. We need to be temperate in all things. Have self-control. Temperate. Now, then we, and I've told you, the, some of the deniers of those Olympians, what they deny themselves of. Many of them, they deny themselves of food. Do you know, so, uh, many of the Olympians, do you know that every day, in fact, there was one that even said because of the Olympic, I think uh, it was one of the uh, young street, uh, divers, that said because of the Olympic, he wants to even defy his G uh, GSE exams. Until after the Olympic, he had an extra year. You know, and not only that, so I can have time for parties. 
the gift themselves to daily rigorous exercises. Exercises every day, either winter or summer. They are always there practicing. Rigorous exercise. Not only that, many of them told you they deny themselves of food, of food, of some things. And some pleasures. In fact, many of them they deny themselves of pleasures. In fact, many of them, they, those that are going to pop houses every Friday, Saturday, and all these things, they deny themselves of all those things till after the Olympics and after all those things. And the Bible says they did that to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. That's why we need to run brethren. That's why I consider this message this morning. Running the Christian ways. We need to strive. We need to enter in. Generally, these people, the athletes, they will prepare for a long time so that they can win that ultimate, that particular prize. I've told them that history tells us that their training used to be very, very rigorous, like we will see in last year Olympics. They will be preparing to run the race under various restrictions of diet. I've told us of one or two of them last year. And the most famous of the race those days, in the days of the early church, was that of the foot race, the running, the athletics. And the Bible also makes use of this illustration to teach us of some things. We learn some things from Paul the Apostle today. Paul the Apostle was not detached from his environment. That is very important. He was not detached. You know, because he knew. Remember, Paul the Apostle was well educated. Not only was he well educated, he knew what was going on in the society. He was not an ignorant fellow. And I'm asking of this morning, you that says we are Christian, we that says we are even educated, are we engaging ourselves with our environment? Do you know what is going on in your environment? Like you say, oh, well, this one is not my own, I'm just passing through. Yes, this is not our own, we are just passing through. That we are heavily conscious should not make us to be detached from our environment. Engage with the community where you are. Know what is going on there. Be where I am bring out spiritual lessons that we can learn. That was what Paul the Apostle did. Because Paul was familiar with the Olympics of Athens. He was familiar, now not only with the Olympics, but also with some other sports. What does the really is? If you read from verse 24 to 27, Paul did not just mention just the athletics. That's why he says here, and everyone that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Everyone that strive, that, that strive, there is a striving. That shows us another point of a kind of wrestling. When you strive, is a kind of wrestling. Wrestling, he was familiar with those things. In verse 20, let's see verse 27. But I keep my body and bring it into subjection. Lest by any means, when I have free, no, uh, before verse 27, let me read verse 26. I therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that do what, beat the air. When you beat the air, what is that? That is like boxing, boxing. Paul was not detached from his environment. He knew all those things and he now used those things to teach spiritual lessons. Not that he himself was involved in them, you understand? But he used those things to bring us spiritual lessons. The same thing we are telling you this morning. Get involved, know what is going on in your surrounding and turn those things into spiritual benefit of yourself, of your family, and of the church of God. And the Lord himself will help us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible, the word of God, makes use of illustration of running the race and compare it to the Christian life that we learned in our text this morning. And this is what Paul the Apostle is talking about here. He's talking about the Christian life in terms of running the race. Today we can apply it spiritually. 
as we also we are pilgrims on our way to heaven, we are involved in this race, we are engaged in this way. And that's what I'm considering this message this morning. Warning the Christian race. For better understanding of our message, we want to consider this under priest of heaven. Point one, the contest of the Christian race. The contest of the Christian race. Point two, we consider the conduct of Christians in the race. The conduct of Christians in the race. Then point three, we consider before we pray, crowns for the conquering runners. Crowns for the conquering runners. We want to look at the context of the Christian race. What is the race all about? What is the context of this way? How do we explain it? What does, what does it imply? What does it mean? If you go back to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, how we verse 26, I therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat the air, that beat the air. You see, the Paul the Apostle for liking the Christian life to a race. For those who run in the races in this world, there is first a desire for the crown. There is first a desire, like I told us, the ultimate goal. A desire for the reward of the prize. And that's what they are going to win. Is that not so? That's why that's why, that's why you see them all. That's why you see because everyone, they are all fighting. They are all fighting. They say, oh, I must get the prize. I must win the gold. I must win this. I must get the honor at the end of the race. It is the same thing with us as Christians. When you hear of heaven, when you hear about the glory in heaven, when you hear about the happiness in heaven, when you hear about the eternal life, there should be a desire within you that you want to win that prize of our high calling. There should be that desire. There should be that longing within you, my brother. There should be that longing within you, my sister. You must have that desire day by day that you want to win that race, that prize of our high calling to get to heaven. And I'm asking you this morning, when last, when last do you long for heaven? When last do you long for heaven? And you say you're a Christian. And you say you're a child of God. And you say you're giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm asking you this morning, when last you have that desire, the desire to get to heaven, or now all your desire is just this war. I want to get a new car. I want to buy a bigger home, or buy my first home. I want to work in a good company. Yes, all those things are good, but I'm asking you, after those things, what next? After those things, what next? Man can never be satisfied with the things of this world. That's what the truth. Because God has put a longing in every man. God has put an insatiable attitude in every man. That the only thing that truly really satisfied is the thing of eternal value. Is the thing of eternal value. That's why we must have that desire. Because if you don't have the desire, if you don't have the longing to get to heaven, all the things we are saying today will not be meaningful in your life. When in the race, what does it concern you? If that's, you know, have you ever seen any athletes going into a race and say, well, I'm just going there for the fun of it. I've never seen one. I've never seen one. They always go with the aim to win the first prize. The only thing, the same thing the Lord is telling you on this one, there must be that desire. You must allow the heavenly consciousness to come within you. And when you have that desire, look at what Jesus now told us. In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, I'll read verse 24 of Luke chapter 13. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. When there is that desire in you, then you must try, try to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, 
we seem to enter in and shall not be able. Strive, my brother, strive. The Christian race is not something we just run leisurely. The Christian life is not just something we just live casually. No, you can't live the Christian life casually. Jesus himself said, you need to strive. You need to strive. You see, oh, Pastor, I thought I am saved by the grace of God. Yes, we are saved by the grace of God only. To enter into the kingdom of God, we are saved by the grace of God only. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages, clear for me. We are saved by grace, not by self-works. But then, how do we remain in that kingdom of God? That's what Jesus told us there. Strive to enter in. Strive. We must strive. And striving requires an effort. And striving requires some things. That's the context of the Christian race. That's the context of our spiritual life. It is a life of striving. You must strive. No say, oh, I am a man of peace. Yes, you have the peace of God in you. But then we are called into a spiritual battle. Into spiritual battle. Into fight. What the apostles say, so fight I. We must fight. In this Christian race, we fight. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking of physical fights. I'm not just talking of you going to that one and say, you know, as Christian, once you begin to do physical fights, you are no more a Christian, you are not a sinner. Do you understand? But then you are talking about the spiritual fights. And one of the greatest fights we are called upon to fight daily is not the fight against your enemies. Forget that. That's not the fight. It's not the fight against uh, spiritual uh, darkness. That's not the greatest fight. The greatest fight we are called to fight every day until we get to heaven is the fight against self. Against yourself. That's why Jesus says, strive. Strive. Because self will want to hinder. Because yourself will want to pull you back. This self, this body does not like anything that inconvenient is. If you fight, that's why when I see people today, they say, oh, Pastor, you know, I have to take care of my body. Yes, take care of your body. But if that body is contesting with you, with the things of God, then fight against that self. Self. The greatest fight to enter in. We are poor. In the normal race, it's not everyone who has the desire that eventually succeeds. Do you get that? Many go to the Olympics with the desire to win the gold medal. But not every one of them takes the first position. I've told you that before. It's only one person. When you go to the podium, when they are doing the ceremony award, they always have, if you look at the stand, the stand is always small for just one person. To take the and they'll put the first person up. Is that not so? And then the second and the third beside the first person. Is that not so? The same thing spiritually. Not everyone that has the desire to get to heaven will eventually get to heaven. Not every church goer will get to heaven. Not every not all those who call on the name of Jesus Christ will get to heaven. If you take those. Who are the desire and who are striving, who are fighting, who are running the way spiritually, it will take them, who are diligent, watchful, it will take those people to get to heaven, to get to heaven. And as we get there, look at it again. In First Timothy chapter 1, First Timothy chapter 6, rather, chapter 6. Verse 12. You need to fight where well, well. it says, fight the good fight of faith. You see that in your Bible, that's the contents of the Christian way. Fight the good fight of faith. It is the good 
fight. Don't fight the bad fight of faith. The one you keep married with that sister is the bad fight of faith. The one you have with that brother is the bad fight of faith. But the good fight of faith is the fight against self. It's the fight against Satan. It's the fight against the war and its practices. Fight the good fight of faith. Live hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art called and have professed a good profession before what? Before what? Before what? Many, many, many weaknesses. Many weaknesses. Many weaknesses. Fight that good fight of faith. People are watching you. Do you know in the Olympics? You know when the Olympics started in Athens, they have what they call a, a stadium. And the class are there. Just like when they did the London Olympic last year. Do you know that the Olympic Stadium was built specifically for that London Olympics? Where the opening and the closing ceremony took place. And why did they do that? Because they know that if you must have a good competition, there must be spectators. Is that not so? Spectators. And you know, in those spectators, in those spectators, some will be wishing that, oh, my, my own person wins the race. Like I remember when they did the 100 meter race. In fact, the person, he came with the, the families were there. Some members of his family were there. And what were they wishing? And others also, they had their own family members there. Some were wishing, my person will win the race. The other one were wishing, my own, the, that person will not win. It's my own person that will win. Is that what they say? Is that what they do? The same thing spiritually. Can I tell you this morning? In these ways that we are running spiritually, the contest of the spiritual race, that's a dark profess against many witnesses. Can I tell you, we are both the good spectators and the bad spectators. God is watching you. Jesus is watching you. The Holy Spirit is watching you. The saints who are in heaven, Abraham, Israel, David, those saints who are in heaven, the twelve apostles, my God, Judas Iscariot, those saints who are in heaven, they are all watching you. They are all watching you. They are all watching this. They are all watching us. They are looking down from heaven, watching us. And they are rich for us. They are winning. They are rich for us because they are our family members. They want us to win this way. They want us to win this way. But there are other kinds of spectators that are also watching you. Can I name them for you? Number one of them is the devil. The devil is watching you. The devil is watching you. Those demons, they are also watching you. The spiritual principalities and powers, they are also watching you. And they are rich for you. And can I tell you also, even yourself is watching you. And they are rich for you is that you will not make the race. But my prayer is that you will make this race in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at what Jesus himself told you. I mean, look at what the Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1, we are foreseeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I've told us now, cloud of witnesses. They are all watching us. Let us lay aside. If we must want this way successfully, my brother, if we must want this way successfully, my sister, lay aside every weight, every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us. Lay aside every way. What are those ways? Number one, the corruptions of the world. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. The corruption. Those are the ways. The corruption of this world. They want to hinder you from running this way successfully. The law of the world. We want to hinder you. That's the way. Lay it aside. The desire for money. We want to hinder you. Lay it aside. Don't allow the desire. That's why many people make a possible. We can go sold our life and so that as a pastor, I need to make money. I need to work. And then you work and they are calling you, come now, come this time. And you know that's the time for Bible study. And you know that's the time for fellowship with God's people. And so what can I do? I have to make this money. I have to pay my bills. 
Yes, you have to pay your bills. But when those things, those weights are now coming into your life, they're not even you from your Christian fellowship and activity with God. The Bible says, lay them aside. Lay them aside. Lay them aside. The weight, the pollutions of the things of this world. What are the things you are now watching on the internet that corrupts the mind? That pollutes the mind. That defies the mind. That may, takes away your time from prayer. That takes away your time from Bible study. That takes away your time from fellowship with those people. Lay them aside. Lay them aside. All the way. All the way. And the sin which God so easily beset all. The sin. Your besetting sin. Those sins that are peculiar to you in particular. Those sins. Those are your besetting sins. Those things that we are so common to you that before you go converted, those are the things. It's just a, like a way of life to you. Now that you are converted, that easily besetting sin. It could be anger. People say, oh, anger is not sin. Anger is sin. It's sin. When you get angry, and you begin to see all nonsense, and you still say, well, it's because, Pastor, you know, it's because I'm not sanctified. No, it's not sanctification you need. What you need is salvation. What you need is salvation. Because anger is sin. You know, all those things, it could be anger. It could be that you are easily touchy. Somebody steps on your leg. You can't let, you can't just let something go. You always call that. You know, that's so easily beset you see. That is peculiar to you. It's not until you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or you're going to adopt me. No. It could, be, it could be talking. It could be jesting. You are a talkative. That's so easily beset you see. The Bible says, the sin, you must lay them aside if you must mourn this way successfully. That's the context of the Christian way. Hold the sin that easily beset us. And he says, let us mourn with patience. That's the context. You must mourn with patience. Can I tell you this morning? The Christian race is not like one of it's not like a 100 meter relay race. It's not the relay, it's not the 100 meter race. That is no, a spring race. The Christian race is not a spring race. The Christian race, and I tell you this morning, is even more than the marathon race. And those, if you watch those runners in the marathon race, eh, you see what they do at the beginning of the race. I'm saying nothing because uh, by the grace of when I was young, I used to do all those things. You know, when they do all those things, when they start that race, they don't start patiently. They start gently. They start, they start conserving. That's what we do today. You start conserving your energy. You start conserving your energy. You start conserving your energy. Now when it gets to almost the end of the race, what do you do? You begin to use those energy you have been conserving. You begin to use them. You begin, that's why you see in the marathon race, it's not, you, it's not the first person that leads at the beginning. We always win the race at the end. It's not always like that. It's not always like that. You know, the critters have the Christian race in. You must swarm with patience, brethren. We are coming to the end of our age. This is the time we need to put in on our strength. This is the time. This is not the time to say, oh, Pastor, I think I am tired now. I think I am weak now. I think, Pastor, now I need some time off. This is not the time. This is the time to run this race. Run with all our energy. Like we sang this morning. Give of your best to the master. Give of your life. Give of your time. Give of everything you have to this race. And we will win the race in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. This leads us to point two. What should be our conduct? The conduct of Christians in the race. The conduct of Christians in the race. If you go back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians, what should be our conduct? How should we run this race? The, the conduct of Christians in the race. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And everyone that strives for the mastery is temperate. Temperate in all things. Temperate in all things. Let us stop there. If 
you, 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 you don't have these strong doors of temperance, of self-control, of self-denial. If you don't have these strong doors, can I tell you this morning, you will not be able to run this way successfully. If you are the one that just live carelessly, if you are the one that just live casually, if you are the one that just, you know, it doesn't matter, anything goes, anything comes in, it doesn't matter, no watchfulness, no diligence, you cannot run this way successfully. But the apostle says that everyone that strives there for the mastery, if you want to win that crown, if you want to win that prize of the ultimate goal, which is heaven, then you need to be temporary. Not in some things. Please get this right. There are people that their own temporary is just in the church. When it comes to Sunday, ah, Pastor, uh, this is the view of the Lord. I am temporary on Sunday. How about Monday? How about Tuesday? How about Wednesday? How about Thursday? How about Friday and Saturday? You must be temperate in all things. Temperate in all things. Then in verse 27, but I keep under my body. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I preach to others, I may say, to be a castaway. You will not be a castaway. Yeah. That's why you must bring your body under control. Into subjection. The conduct of Christian in the ways is the conduct of self-discipline. Self-control. You must bring it under. In fact, look at what the Lord Himself told us in Matthew chapter three, cha- Matthew chapter sixteen, Matthew chapter sixteen. Are we verse twenty-four of Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty-four? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Remember, this is the conduct of Christians, not sinners. Jesus did not say to the world, he said to his disciples, this thing we are talking about today, the conduct, is for those who are already in the race. If you are not already in the race, you are still a sinner, you still have anger in you, you still have bitterness in you, you still have wrath in you, you still have you know, jealousy in you, you still have lying in you, white lie or black lie, whatever lie. You start immorality in you, pornography, all those things you watch on the internet. You start them in you. You know, you start covetousness in you. You know, those things, you start them in you. You know, people you don't see eye to eye, you start those things in you. What you need is salvation. You must first of all be converted. Jesus said unto his disciples, You must first be a disciple. Before you can go with these conduits of Christians in the race. Look at what Jesus said to his disciples. If any man will come after me, let him do what? In verse 24, if any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Deny himself. Deny. I'm asking you this question this morning. When last do you deny yourself? When last do you deny yourself? Of even some legitimate things, there are some things that are legitimate. Do you know that? Do you know that there are some things that are legitimate? But Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Can you deny yourself of some legitimate sleep? You need to sleep that day. But you say no, because I am I'm striving for the cross, the pride. You deny yourself of legitimate sleep. To hold a vigil to pray. You see what we're talking about here? That's why we come in our church here. We have a Friday that we have for our Father night. We will listen to our Father in the Lord and pray a vigil. 
And yet we have need, we have some of us that have never been to the prayer BG, that have never even been near on fire, and you think you're a Christian. Oh pastor, you know I must sleep. You know my children must sleep. And Jesus himself said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Or some legitimate things. Not those things who are not uh, who are not just spiritual, even some legitimate things. Do you know some of us who got converted? Eh? There are some places we made up our mind. And I'm not talking about just working in a tobacco company. Already, you know, as a Christian, you cannot do that. I'm not just talking about working in a, in a brewery, in a place where there's alcohol. You know, as a Christian, you cannot do that. But I'm talking about some good job. We did not say some good, good job. We see, because of the ministry, because of the work God has committed into our life, we just need the vow and say, God, I just make up my mind. I'm not going to work in this particular uh, 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 kind of business, kind of uh, place of company. Because I know that if I get in here, that will take me away from the ministry that you have committed into my hand. And I'm asking you, when last do you deny yourself of some legitimate things? Not to even talk of other things, other things, other things. Other thing. But Jesus himself said there, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take off his cross. You are the cross, my brother. You are the cross, my sister. And the cross of Christ. I'm telling you all this money. It's not something you can just carry pleasurely. No. It's not something you can carry pleasurely. It's a heavy cross. Don't you see Christ himself when he carried that cross, when he was going on his way, on the way to Calvary? When he was going, he, you know, because of the cross and the beating upon him, he was, you know, the cross was so heavy that all the time he could not even carry the cross again. Do you know that? That, you know, so the uh, woman stood out to ask somebody to do what? To help him to carry the cross. To carry the cross. The cross of Christ is heavy. Very and we are called to carry that cross by the grace of the Lord. When we talk about the cross, what do we mean? We are talking about the cross, the cross of Christ, the cross of separation. That's the cause of Christ. That will call you to be separate. It's the cross you have to carry. There are things that the people of the world will do that we as Christians we cannot do. And that's the cross. That's the cross. They can do it. Other people, you say, others can do it. Other so-called Christians can do it. But there are some things that we, we who are born again, who we are on the way, on the pathway of righteousness and holiness that the Lord Himself has called us to do. And that's the cross. And we must carry that cross. And the Lord will give us that grace to carry it in Jesus' name. Amen. So you see, self is very important. If we must if we must, you know, conduct ourselves as Christians in this way successfully. Self is very important. And how do we how do we how do we take care of self? Number one, the conduct of Christians in the race. It entails the following. Number one, self control vatting. Self-control battle. What do we mean by that? Self-denial. Those simply mean self -denial. deny yourself. We read that in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Deny yourself. You, yourself will tell you, I want to eat now. I am hungry now. That's time to say, oh, myself, my flesh, today is not day of eating. I'm going to deny myself of food today so that I can wait and pray on the Lord. The self will tell you, oh, I want to sleep now. I want to sleep now. There will be self control that thing. Deny yourself of sleep. Deny yourself of some legitimate thing so that you can go in the pathway of the Lord. Number two, even your eyes will want to tell you, watch these things, look at these things on the internet, deny your, deny your eyes of it. Number two, there must be self condescending condescending, which is self abasement You must humble yourself. You must humble yourself. If you must walk with the Lord thy God, humbly thyself, there will be self abasement That should be our conduct, we say. In this way, self abasement condescending, putting yourself low. Not that all the time you are always high idea. Number three, we've read this already, there will be self-control. 
self-control. Control. Control. There must be self-control. And number four, there must be self-crucifixion. You must crucify yourself. You must crucify this self. And number five, there must be self-shangling. What do you mean by that? That's self-mortification. Mortify yourself. Mortify yourself that you don't give yourself to the, you know, to being pleasure and self number six, self consent, uh, consecration. Consecrate yourself, your bodies. You know, people tell us today that we have pastor, my own religion is the religion of the heart. No, it's not just a religion of the heart, it's a religion of the body. That's why Paul the apostle said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Your bodies, members of your bodies. There are some things your eyes cannot see. There are some things you cannot put on yourself. There are, we don't go in the air dues of the world as Christian, as Christian women that wants to make heaven. We don't go and make the air dues of the world. We don't do the paintings of the world. We don't go before the mirror and all the hours we spend here in painting our face, painting our eye like this, putting our eye like this, painting the mouth, painting the fingers, painting the finger, the, the nails as Christian. We don't do that. Present your bodies as the temples of the Lord. We as Christians, there are some things we cannot put on as Christian. Christians, so Christian ladies, we don't wear trousers. Because the Bible says, we will not put on that which belongs to the opposite self. These are the things the Lord is calling also. The conduct of Christian in the race. And number seven, there must be self catechism What do you mean by that? Self-examination. You examine yourself every day. Like I told us during the question and answer. You want to come in into your family. Those children go out, you bring them into the home, and you examine them. You examine them. Look at the things they are bringing in. Your own life also. You examine yourself. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. That's what the Bible tells us. Examine yourself. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If we do all these things, we go in this path of conduct of Christians in the way, then we will get the adventure, the rewards. The reward. This is also for three crowns for the conquering runners. Crowns. There are crowns, brethren. I said there are crowns, brethren. Can you tell your neighbor, you, I have the crown. Tell me with confidence. I have the crown. There are crowns for the conquering world. But this world, these crowns are for those who will conquer. Are for those who will run the way successfully. Are for those. The, uh, before the apostle says we will bear the mark in first Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 25. For, uh, for everyone that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do this to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. We have an incorruptible crown, brethren. I say we have an incorruptible crown, brethren. Yeah. You know, we may meet with some challenges in the world. We may meet with some problems. Those things, those problems are just little, little things. Don't allow those problems to take you away from the Christian race. Oh, Pastor, I've been praying for a good job now, and up to now, I've not got the job. My God, I want this way successfully. Want it patiently, the job will come. God allow because of the desire for job to push you away from the Christian way. Don't allow, oh, Pastor, look at me now, look at our challenges. We have problem with visa, we have immigration issues. Don't allow those minor, minor, yeah, those minor, minor problems. Don't allow them to take you away from the Lord, brethren. Let don't allow discouragement. Oh, I've been praying now. Oh, God bless me with child. Give me a child. The thing has not come. Look at those. Can't you name from Sarah? Can't you name from Abraham? Sarah, if they waited upon the Lord, and eventually, can I tell you this morning? It's because God is, is preparing an Isaac for you. Amen. I said, God is preparing an Isaac for you. Amen. Look at, look at, look at, look at uh, Samuel too. God is preparing a Samuel for you. And those children that will come in Jesus' name. Don't allow this to take us away from the 
my partner has been looking for money now, all the debts on my head now, can I pay my debt? The credit card debt is there, the debit card debt is there. Don't allow those things to take you away from the law. Poverty will come, challenges will come, sicknesses will come, the other sicknesses will also come, the times will be done, will be seen. Don't allow the sickness to make you to not be discouraged and talk against your God. We must hold on to the end, baby. My brother, we must hold on. My sister, we must hold on. Because there is a crown awaiting us in heaven. Can I tell you this morning? Heaven is waiting for you. I say, heaven is waiting for you. The disciples, the early church fathers, they are all praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. God the Father is interested that you make heaven. Jesus is interested that you make heaven. The angels in glory, they are all interested that you will make heaven. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? We are not tribulations. We are not problems. We are now challenges of life. We are now, you know, the difficulties of UK to make us to lose heaven. I pray that none of these things will make us to go back from the Lord in Jesus' name. Because there is a crown awaiting you in heaven. One look at this crown. Number one, there is the crown of honor. The crown of honor is waiting for you. Number two, the crown of kings. They are waiting for you. The crown of life. Waiting for you, the crown of righteousness, number four, waiting for you, the crown of glory, waiting for you, and I tell you also, the crown of soul winning is waiting for you in heaven, and lastly, the incorruptible crown. You know, look at all these crowns, so great crowns, they are all waiting for you, and Jesus wants to crown you, wants to crown you in glory, he wants to rise from your sea and to place those crowns upon your head, and I'm asking all this morning. What will take you away from this path of righteousness? What will take you away? Go the extra man. Go the extra man, my brother. Go the extra man, my sister. For that path is never crowded. Go that extra man. You know, C.S. Lewis says, he says, God knows our situation. He will not judge us as if we have no difficulties to overcome. What matters is the sincerity and the perseverance of our will to overcome them. God will not judge you because of the sickness. God will not judge you because you don't have money. God will not judge you because you don't have visa to be in the UK. God will not judge you because of the difficulties. But what matters before God, what God will judge you with is your sincerity and your perseverance to overcome those challenges, to overcome those problems. You know, uh, uh, David Livingstone, he says, I am prepared to go anywhere. Provided it be forward, I determine never to stop until I have come to the end and achieve my purpose. And achieve my purpose. What is your determination this morning? Can you be determined like, like a David Livingstone? Has determined never to stop. I'm not going to run this way halfway. I've made up my mind. I will hold on to the end and achieve the, my purpose, which is. Winning the crown at the end of the Christian race. As we wrap up this morning, I want to leave you. I've told this story, but I still want to leave you with this story of the 40 soldiers that, that, that became martyrs for the Lord Jesus Christ because they were Christian. You know, these soldiers in the year AD 316, 316, they were captured because they were Christian. And they were thrown into a valley that was very cold. And I suppose, you know, there was like they were dropped, they dropped them into an ice cold area. So that one by one, those soldiers, 40 of them, would be freezing to death because of, because of their stand for Christ. And you know what those people do? They, what they did, they also need that valley of cold ice valley. When they place those soldiers, they also prepare a warm loop lane. For them, so that anyone that renounce and say, Well, I am no way a Christian, they will take that person immediately and put him into the warm river, and then he will, you know, it will be warm again and he will not die. But do you know, those soldiers, 40 of them, they stood their ground. They said, No, we will not renounce, no, we will not return, no, we will hold on to them. And the soldiers were watching them. The soldiers that actually they were watching there. They were watching there. 
and do you know, God opened the eyes of one of the soldiers and he saw that our two soldiers were and they were dying one by one. Angels were just coming to give them their reward, their crown, their crown. They God not open the eyes of that soldier. And when he got to the dark night one, when he got to the last soldier standing, I pray you will not be the last man here. You know, they, they couldn't get the pain again. He said, he said, no, I cannot continue again. I cannot stand again. And he renounced Christ. And he denied Christ. And they brought him out alive. He lost his crown. But do you know that soldier that saw the thing that was happening to all the other soldiers that died? He quickly said, No, if you renounce me, I'll accept Christ. Me, I made up my mind. I want to be a Christian. And he jumped, he jumped into that valley and he died. And he died and he replaced that other Christian. And he took his own crown. And I'm asking you this morning, who will take your crown from you? Rise up and let us you want to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. You want to tell the Lord this morning, I have determined to hold on to the end. Walk this way, my brother. Walk this way, my sister. Don't make every man take your crown. Make up your mind this morning. Lord, help me. I want to walk the way to the end. Don't allow the challenges, the law for money, to make you lose your Christian experience. Commit yourself to the Lord this morning. Don't allow anyone to take away your crown. Determine my brother. Determine my sister. You will fight against sin. You will fight against self. You will fight against the flesh. You will fight against the war. Make up your mind this morning. You want to run the race in the very end. That nobody will take your crown, my sister. Nobody will take your crown, my brother. There is a reward for you. That's why you must walk. Let there be self-denial. Let there be self-control. Control your appetite. The things you eat. Control your life. Christians will not just go anywhere. Let there be self-discipline. Let there be crucifixion of self. Crucify yourself. Let there be self mortification. Mortify yourself. Consecrate yourself to the Lord only. Present your bodies unto the Lord. As a living sacrifice this morning, and make up your mind. Don't be discouraged, my brother. Don't be discouraged, my sister. Hold on to the air. Hold on to the air that nothing will take you away from the love of God. Nothing will take you away from the Bible. Make up your mind this morning. You want to run away to the end, my brother. You want to run away to the end, my sister. If the Lord tarries, ten years to this time, we'll still be seeing you in the bed. If the Lord tarries, five years to this time, we'll still be hearing of you in the bed. Make up your mind, Lord. I am determined to hold on to the end. I am determined to hold on to the end. Be determined, my brother. Be determined, my sister. Heaven is waiting for you. The host of heaven is waiting for you. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Everywhere you go, you will serve the Lord. You will serve the Lord. You will hold on to the very end. Nothing will take you away. Nothing will take you away from the Lord. You will not allow sin to take you away. You will not allow that certain sin to take you away. You will not backslide. We will not backslide. We will not go back. We will not depart from the Lord. Don't love the world. There is nothing to love. There is nothing to love in this world because the love of the world can take you away from the Lord. Make up your mind. You will see the crown at the end of your life. You will see the crown at the end of the race. You will see the crown. Nobody will take your crown, my brother. Nobody will take your crown, my sister. Run the race to the very end. Run the race to the very end. Ask for grace, my brother. Ask for grace, my sister. 
Are you getting tired of every weight of the Lord this morning? And tell the Lord that the Lord Himself will renew you, will give you grace to continue, to continue in this Christian race. Blessed Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this wonderful day again. Thank you for your timely reminder. Lord, we are in your race. How I pray that your grace will always be sufficient for us. That you show unto us this very morning there are conducts that you are expecting to see in us. If we want to run this race to the end, grant us, O oh Lord, the strength, the ability, and all we need to be able to comport ourselves accordingly, according to your instruction to us this morning, so that we can do to run this race successfully to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray, O oh God, the encouragement we need. And for as many, O oh God, have already fainted on this race, Lord, on this highway, I pray this very morning, Lord, your strength from above will come upon them, Lord. The strengthen them from the book within and with us, so that we can rise up once again and run, O oh God, until we get to the very destination and that eternity with you we will not stop the race, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for many, O oh God, that have not even started in our midst this morning and they are desiring to start, O oh God. That grace for them to call upon you for salvation so that they can start this race. Grant unto them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those of us already on this way, O oh God, I pray every passing day the strength we need to run successfully for that day. Grant unto us, Lord, and day by day, Father, that grace, let it continue, still, Lord, Father, be sufficient to take us through the year and all the, all the years we will be meeting on earth, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Father, because we have answered for this good we've entered, O oh Lord. Let your grace be there for us, Lord. So that this very week we will run this race successfully, and week by week, O oh Lord, we will see your grace and your, and your ability supporting us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because we have answered in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.